Well, they are some of the most vulnerable children in our state, and a CARE 11 investigation finds families of kids with severe special needs have been left behind by distance learning. Lauren Lemanchek has the story of families unable to access the help they need to live and learn because of government red tape. This is distance learning for 10 year old Charlie Drayton, a daily 30 minute video class. Where's Charlie? Born with Down syndrome and cerebral palsy, Charlie can't walk, can't log himself into the iPad. He's nonverbal. But he loves and is legally entitled to learn. Charlie has been doing a great job of using his voice this morning. He loves school. In normal times, Charlie attends Bridgeview School, a specialized St. Paul public school for kids with special needs. And they work on feeding skills, uh, toileting, swim therapy. So he, he, he does get an educational component, but he also gets uh, the, the therapies that go along with kids with more or multiple disabilities all pieces of his individualized education plan, and none of it happens on an iPad. Is Charlie getting what he deserves right now in terms of his education? No, his IEP is not being met. They can't provide that because they can't provide the one-on-one -on -one services. Charlie's mom and dad, Tegan and Chuck, don't blame his teachers. They blame the government. The teachers, the therapists, the school's great. Their hands are tied. Um, these kids need one-on-one. -on -one. Those one-on-one -on -one services would normally be provided during the day by a school paraprofessional trained to help kids like Charlie. But state guidance from the Department of Education says school staff, including those paras, cannot provide in-home direct services to kids because of COVID. Meanwhile, these current regulations from DHS say PCAs, the people who help families away from school with needs like toileting and feeding Meeting, cannot help with distance learning. So families and kids are often left with no help at all during the school day. Parents are, are incredibly confused right now. They're scared and they're worried about the quality of education that's going to happen with their children. State Rep Heather Edelson has been trying to broker a solution between the Department of Human Services, the Department of Education and local school districts. She says some of it comes and down so to who pays for what. Creating, if a state is creating more barriers for families, that's a problem. Why are we just talking about this now? I'm incredibly frustrated that we're coming at the last hour to try to fix this problem. It's a problem Minnesota could be legally required to fix. Federal law says students are entitled to a free and appropriate public education. Use your hands. But so far, Blake Kelly says that's not what her 14 year old son Oscar is receiving. He's completely dependent on people for everything. Blake works full time and has PCAs to help Oscar. But under those guidelines, they cannot help with distance learning. School districts were told they may contract with outside agencies or even pay PCAs to help but they don't have to, and some don't have the budget. Blake says Edina Public Schools is looking into a contract. I'm in a total bind caught in between all these different regulations, trying to figure out how to keep my son safe and on distance learning so I can work during the day. The Minnesota Department of Education declined an interview with CARE 11. We wanted to know, like so many families, why six months into the pandemic, families still don't have answers. In an email, MDE says they are working on it. For families like the Drayton's and the Kelly's, a solution can't come fast enough. It's hard because we're seeing him regress. I know everybody's struggling, so it's not like I think we deserve more, but we at least deserve, our kids at least deserve the bare minimum. They deserve a little bit of, of help. It's not just an issue in the school districts Charlie and Oscar attend. I contacted some of the largest districts in our state. They tell me right now they're still waiting on more clarification and guidance from the Department of Education on how to handle the one-on-one -on -one help for special needs kids. For CARE 11 Investigates, I'm Lauren Lemanchek.